This is working. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, Charlie here from Ometis uh, with the lovely and amazing Jin. Um, we are in class three of our Crash Course Tarot today. Um, you know, we've gotten some basics from class one, got into the, the cards and the major and minor arcana, really working with that. Um, we had a lot of, we actually got a few emails, Jin, about making sure we see the cards because people are so, um, I think getting so much benefit from knowing and relate relating to the cards. I think like if we can, anything we show that's showing up, sorry, bug. There's a bug in the forest tonight. I don't know what's attacking me. Um, but uh, people I think really want to create that relationship with you and the cards. So uh, just one note before we start. Um, but yeah, if uh, the chat is open, we'd love to hear uh, from everybody and where you're from. Um, it should be, now it's turned on, great. There it is. Um, but yeah, if you want to use the Q&A box, if you have any questions, um, Jin, how are you? I'm great. Great to be here. Excellent. Hey, Kylie. Kylie. Hey, Karen. I see a lot of familiar names. I'm wondering if anyone's new. Is anybody new and wants to introduce themselves? Hi, Janet. Hey, Linda. Great to see you again. Nancy's here. Louise is here. I'm so excited too. And thank you for letting um, Charlie know about seeing the cards. I'll definitely um, be better about that this time. I'm glad that you gave that feedback. Um, so just keep me posted if you can't see it and we'll um, amend that, amend that, we'll correct that. Um, so nobody's new. I think everybody's just like, everybody knows what's up. We've been here for a while. If I'm wrong about that, feel, feel free to introduce yourself. Um, so we've kind of, delved into the card meanings to some extent you guys know the structure of the deck so today is more of a hands-on kind of day where um hi mary alice where we're going to get into reading and how to read and yeah we're going to keep it simple because keeping it simple i think allows us to really keep the focus on you which is what this is all about right so in the spirit of keeping it simple, I think we're just gonna do three card spreads and I'm gonna to explain to you how that works. So what is a spread? Does anyone have an idea of what that even means? What is your notion of what that means? Maybe you've seen like a TV show or a movie where they had a tarot reader and it's like, okay, what's the layout of the cards? Exactly, how the cards are laid out. And I'm gonna, um, show you my screen real quick. Um, so okay. So for this, you're not going to actually see the cards. I just want you to see when you see these three cards in this configuration, what kinds of meanings do you think it could evoke? What does it feel like to you? Trying to see my chat box here. Past, present, future, great. This gives a very clear, like this is a timeline of something, right? When you see this, what does that feel like? <laughs> You're still caffeinating, so keep it simple. Okay, Cheryl, tell me if it's not simple enough. Building up to something, where you're going, first, second, third. Great, maybe steps you have to take in order to get somewhere. So here we have, you know, a possible past, present, future. You can also do first option, second option, advice. I mean, there's like infinite possibilities for what you can do here. And you don't even have to go with the idea that this is a progression. You can also just, you know, this is a nice little symmetrical thing. This is in the center, so you kind of think maybe if you take away past, present, future, maybe this feels like it's the focal point and these are two things that are framing it. So you can look online for all kinds of possibilities for what meanings of a three card spread could be. You can make them up yourself. But what I wanted to demonstrate here, you know, we have the, these are the positions, position names, or yeah, position descriptions. So many spread options, like insane amounts. You can go crazy with spreads. And then where you place them exactly gives a different vibe. This is, what is that? <laughs> what is that? 
What does that feel like? Yeah, leading up to a result. Love that. And the fact that this is further apart really makes it stand out in a way that if it's closer together, these are all more equal. I'll give you one more which is, yeah, you guys are totally getting this. So what does this feel like? Anybody? Structure, greatest to least importance. Yeah, this feels a little more like a hierarchy, right? Exactly what you said, greatest to least importance. And structure, yeah, it looks it looks like a building or like a tower or something. Um, like this being the foundation, like a foundation of a house and floors. So people use this a lot of the time for body, mind, spirit. But you can use it for other stuff too. So that's to just give you a sense of design. That's really what we're talking about now. Is there a step down? What do you mean? There's just three here. Is that what you meant? I'm trying to keep the camera closer so you can see the cards in a second. So let's try to interpret some of these spreads. Is there a step down instead of step up? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. You mean like that? Yeah, you can definitely do that. How do you know which spread to use? That's a great question. So let's walk through the process. I'm back to me now so you can see me. There is a triangle spread. Oh my gosh, so many kinds. And if you're cur curious about spreads more, I really recommend this book. Let me see that you can see it. It's called Tarot Spreads by Barbara Moore. And what's really cool is there are a lot of books out there about spreads and that have, you know, a thousand and one tarot spreads. But she breaks down the logic of the design elements, which I think exactly what we were just doing, it makes it more intuitive. So it's more about it's more connected to your intuition rather than like, here's just a bunch of position numbers and like ways to lay it out that are kind of arbitrary. So I would really recommend this if you're interested in getting into it more. It's really a great book. So let's break down what a reading is like. What do you think is the first thing? Let's say you're the tarot reader. What's the first thing you want to do or one of the first things you think you would do when you're meeting with the person who wants to get a reading? Yeah, get them to ask a question. Know the question they want answered. And I like open ended questions. Determine what you want to address. Yeah, and Linda, I'm a little bit more in that mode, in that sometimes I started getting people to ask a question, and what I found out was the question they were asking was actually not the question they said they were asking. Um, I think people mostly, myself included, come to tarot for some kind of solace, a sense of meaning, a sense of it's going to be okay. Um, guidance, direction, maybe a lot of times, like way more often than not, people have an intuitive sense of what they need or the decision they want to make, but they want it to be validated by something external. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's really important sometimes to get that validation. And sometimes the cards is just like, okay, great. That's exactly what I thought. Now I feel like I can make the decision, which is why I've kind of actually strayed a lot from questions. And I just have someone kind of talk about it. It's like I read for someone recently. It's like, okay, so sounds like you want some understanding around how your gender identity is evolving. Like that's not a question, but it's a topic. So you'll kind of get the sense of that. And then you can pick your spread after that. So if someone has a very specific question and you do want to answer it in a specific way, then I would say something like a, a very specific spread, like that three card spread we were just doing of, you know, option one, option two, advice is a possibility or past, present, future. Do something really concrete like that. If you feel like you want to read in a more concrete way, and if you do want to read in a more concrete way, like check out books like this. And then I would say the way that I read, 
I have two kind of things that I tend to do. One is like totally free form, which I'll show you in a second. And then the other one is using the Celtic cross. And again, I don't want to go into this too much because I want to get into more personal stuff or more intuitive stuff. But the Celtic cross, I like to think it has a lot of energy built around it because it's been used for so long. And it's really cool. I think the positive is it really allows you to get a framework for understanding where you are in your life right now. But I think the downside and the downside for me of spreads and positions in general is that it tends to restrict you. Because what if a card comes up and the person's like, that doesn't feel like my past at all, but it actually feels like this other thing it really feels like my present. I would much rather acknowledge that than try to force a square peg into a round hole and say, no, this is your past. Just personal. Let's see. Get to know something about the person. Yeah, definitely. Getting to know the person is a huge part of the first thing. Just needing support. Isn't the that the one they show on show? I'm not sure what that means, so <laughs> tell me what that means. Um, okay, so we're going to do a little practice with a couple spreads based on the cards that you already know, the cards that we've introduced in class already. You might not remember, but it'll be good review. And then, um, yeah, I'll ask for your interpretations, and then maybe we'll do some readings. So um, let's take a look here at, let me get these out of the way. Okay, here's a good one for understanding a situation. So for instance, let me know if you can't see. This says current situation, obstacle, and advice. So for instance, let's say we have the fool here, the nine of swords, and the knight of pentacles. What would be your interpretation of this spread? And maybe before I ask that, we'll just go over, I'll give you some basic keywords for each one. You may already remember this, but just to review. Fool, new beginnings, nine of swords, worry, anxiety, knight of pentacles, steadily moving forward with, uh, what am I trying to say? Steadily moving forward, making steady progress, rather than doing it all at once, just a little bit every day. Consistency. So maybe I'll give you a situation. Maybe the situation is, yeah, great. I was gonna give a situation, but maybe we'll keep it some more simple than that. Who's, who's meowing? <laughs> One of my cats is meowing. You're starting something new. You're worried about it. What's the advice telling you? Yeah, great. Kylie and Louise are on the same page. And um, Kylie just added that the consistency and small steps may help them to be able to tackle the worry. Push forward. Great. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, Jen, that's all fine, well, and good. But what if you get something like this? <laughs> the advice is to worry? That's crazy. Nancy's saying you're kind of floating through life. Great. That's kind of the shadow side of this card is like naivete, not really thinking of the big picture. So you need to persevere through the worry, persevere through the worry. That's fabulous. I think that's a great interpretation. Nine of Swords has eyes covered. Maybe person needs to open their eyes. Genius. Two different interpretations equally valid. The Fool also, you can play with the position of the, the body positions. Yeah, acknowledge their fear. I love that. The Fool is looking backwards. The Knight of Pentacles and the Swords, their bodies are forwards. So this is how you're gonna move forward into the future is by persevering through the fear and 
this person's not in reality about what's going on. They're just sort of looking the other way. Cool. So you feel like, so, I feel someone who is constantly battling anxiety. I thought you said you feel like someone. I was like, we're the same person because <laughs> that's me, 100%. Um, yeah, totally. I think that's, um, for someone who is constantly battling anxiety like myself, the advice to persevere through it is really helpful. Depression, yeah, I feel you. I think a lot of people who come to tarot, we have a lot of, you know, mental health stuff or we're people who are interested in digging deeper and spiritual side of life, all these things. So it's part of why I like it as I get to connect with, with people like me um, who have that kind of stuff. So um, we did past, present, future. We already kind of described that. Oh, there's like a, do we have time to do this? Nah, I'm not going to worry about it. There's a stop, start, continue also. I mean, there's millions. But it sounds like you guys have a pretty decent idea of the way a reading would go, where you would just ask a question and decide on your spread, whatever you want, based on what kind of question it is. And then you read the cards. So many triads. Yeah, I did threes. You can do fours, tens, five millions. I get a lot of aces, especially ace of swords. What are aces about? Thanks for sharing that question, Linda. So aces are the beginning of each suit. So it marks sort of the beginning of the understanding the essence of this card. So um, maybe you're in a phase where you're starting to understand where you are at the beginning of this phase. I would love to know more specifically, though, if you're open to it, maybe you can be our segue into reading. If you want to share what's going on with you, and if you don't, that's totally cool. You can share as much or as little as you want. Why do you think you might be getting aces? What do you think is going on in your life that aces are showing up? And then maybe we can do a little three card spread on you. Have you ever decided after the spread that it had the wrong vibe and tried another? Yeah, I tend not to do that. That's, I think, a common trap. Um, I think you can do whatever you want. But sometimes there's something there that needs to be understood. And I like to ask myself, you know, for me, mindfulness is such a huge part of the tarot practice. And it's like, why don't I like the spread? That's more interesting than the spread being exactly what I wanted it to be, you know? So... There's my thought on that. Yeah, Charlie. It's interesting. The the questioning of the structure, like questioning the teacher when you're in a class, questioning why you're there, questioning the spread. Those can often be really big invitations to look at how you are and how you're doing as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to do um, a reading, I mean, I think it'd be really cool. Uh, Linda, I don't know if you're if you're... Oh, there we go. Linda's sharing. Linda says, lots of stress. I'm raising my granddaughter, who's a great kid, but didn't expect to be doing this at 63. Financial concerns, as well as a lot of serious repairs needed in my home. Hmm. What aces did you get? That's a good question. Karen says, shouldn't you know a lot more about the cards before you do a reading for someone else? Feel free to use the book, but I think also start with your own practice, you know? I would say start reading for yourself um, as a way to start, but you know, you can read whenever you want. Like, I think there's a sphere of reading for other people and it's like, use the book, you know? Um, have fun with it. It can be a fun exploration to do with someone else too. Of like, oh, what do we think this is? Because you guys sharing your interpretations, I was like, wow, these are great interpretations. Like I learned more about the cards from your interpretations. So I think if you consider it sort of a fun collaborative thing to do with friends, that'll actually be a great way to learn too and to get to know your friends. Um, two times Ace of Swords, once Ace of Cups. People who do tarot professionally still refer to reference and book throughout the readings, absolutely. Two times Ace of Swords, one Ace of Cups. I want to pull up these cards and see. So 
Since you guys are so good at this, I'm gonna have you do it. What do you think this might mean based on Linda's situation? And this is kind of a tough one because you don't know these cards. I'm gonna share my insight in a moment, but I'd love to hear from other people. Let's see. Possible to zoom in, let's see. How's that y'all? Is that better? Sorry, it's a little blurry when it's close. First of all, do these cards seem sort of on the surface positive or negative to you? Sense of winning, yes. Victory, you have that wreath there. Overflowing, overwhelmed, nice. So um, the Ace of Swords a lot of times is about mental breakthroughs. It's about victory. You feel that someone else is in control with the hand. Oh my God, I love that. Energetic time of abundance or victory or both. I really love that insight. And I'm so glad you shared that because that's not a traditional concept of the, the, the hand reaching out in this case. It's more like power and like actually feeling in control. Um, or like something is being presented to you that's, you know, a gift that's really, uh, helpful. But I love that. And that's one of those interpretations that comes from following your intuition, rather than following the book meaning. So lean into those, those observations more and more. That's really great. Um, the sort of surface book meaning of this is uh, mental breakthroughs and victory. And then the ace of cups, the overwhelm is um, you're overwhelmed with social situations, or you feel you need to provide for others, the overflowing, great. So y'all are picking up on um, one aspect of this card meaning, which is um, overflowing emotions to the point that they can be overwhelming, absolutely. And you get the sense of just like giving, giving, giving. It's just like never ending, bottomless giving. And um, yeah, the caretaker, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's also love. This is about all encompassing, nourishing love. So perhaps what we're seeing here is um, the, the person might have a tendency um, to, yeah, wisdom, totally. This person might have a tendency to give and love to the point that it's just, it's bottomless. It's so much that it's, it's overwhelming. Um, so it comes from a really beautiful place. And maybe there is a need for some self-love. Maybe, maybe the the cup needs to be filled rather than coming out. We need to like go in the reverse and fill the cup. How do we fill, fill the cup? And then for the Ace of Swords, this to me is really making me think, okay, this is, I mean, I kind of like the idea of you don't usually do what I just did. <laughs> you just put one before the other. I'm just sort of randomly playing around. But I'm also very anti-rules when it comes to tarot, so who cares? But basically like this almost feels to me like the problem Perhaps the problem or the situation, let's not call it a problem. The situation is love that's going out endlessly, maybe not a love coming in. And then perhaps you know, <laughs> the solution is having some sort of um, breakthrough. Maybe this realization is going to trigger a breakthrough that's gonna allow you to set boundaries in a way that's gonna allow you to fill the cup more. And swords are about thought and communication. So perhaps we have here, um, uh, you know, identifying the emotional situation. And here we're going to get into some thinking. What are some tools we can use? What are some options we can lay out for ourselves to put into action this realization? Does that make sense? So those are my thoughts. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I hope that was helpful. Um, thank you so much for sharing. And you did exactly what I hoped someone would do, which is share personally so that we can like really dig into it. So thank you for your vulnerability. Um, it's a really beautiful thing. And if other people are sitting here being like, I don't wanna be vulnerable, is that bad? No, you don't have to. 
it's a group environment. Like I get not wanting to be super sherry. Yeah, you guys have to be vulnerable. It's I'm sorry, it's a part of the it's an enforced rule of the class. <laughs> um yeah, does anyone want want a reading? And I'll just do a little reading for you. Yeah, does anybody want a reading? Also, Karen has a question as well when you have a moment. Okay, let's look at Karen's question. I'm 58 and found out I'm autistic three years ago. I have trouble unmasking. Like like physically unmasking? Oh, I think I think um masking as um the I think that like I, we wear masks and we use nuances within human interaction. I think it's more on that line. Maybe Karen, if you can provide some context, but pretending to be rather than just being, because a lot of us uh, who are neurotypical will pretend a whole hell of a lot because we have an ability to lie to ourselves. <laughs> and and I think within the autistic community, you've got people who are who and how and what they are in that moment, which is a really beautiful. Thing in a lot of ways um, so, so you're saying that you're unable to mask is that what i'm hearing mm -hmm. oh the opposite got it you're saying that okay got it you feel like you're always putting on a mask i mean are we the same person because <laughs> I'm not autistic, but I'm like dealing with a life thing that's very similar right now. So thank you for sharing that. Um, let's do a little reading for you. So I'll put pull up the um, cards. And um, can you actually say if you're okay with other people also offering interpretations? And maybe we won't use your name. We'll just say, I think the cards say X, Y, Z about them or whatever. So you don't feel like someone's imposing something on you. So if you are going to offer an interpretation, let's just try to be mindful of, um, you know, not being too invasive. Try, try to keep the focus on the cards. Um, so I'm going to, um, just so I can get to enough people, because I think we'll stop at 45, and Charlie, let me know if that's incorrect. Um, yeah. That's good? Yep. I think I'll do one card per person. So, but I also want you to get familiar with spreads, so I'm like, should I do two or three? Let's see how many, what do you think what do you I think, think we, i think we have a little bit of time if you want to do maybe one three card spread and then one, a few singles that would be probably okay cool cool yeah let's start with more cards and then if we have to decrease we will um masking okay karen pretending to be someone else Let's all take a deep breath together, actually. So just get grounded for a second. And allow yourself to just breathe into your belly. And we're just sending the intention to empathize and send some love and care and higher wisdom to Linda. Sorry, to Karen. Karen is pretending to be someone else to fit in. After the autism diagnosis, which sounds like it was pretty revelatory for them, we're going to do what I like to do, which is um, an open spread, open three card spread. So Linda, pick one, two, or three. Sorry, I keep calling you Linda. Karen, I apologize. These cards are a little bigger, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. Masking. The devil. <laughs> How does that land with you? <laughs> I'm glad this came up because dealing with difficult cards is a big part of the practice. Queen of Wands. We've had that one before. Bright, sunshiny Queen of Wands in her element in social situations, very related to masking or unmasking. And then we have the Five of Pentacles, which we've also had, which represents sort of a lack mindset and a feeling of helplessness. 
So what I see here, because I said I don't go by position numbers, I go by whatever patterns I see, um, is this feels to me like you. This is your capacity for authentic connection from your highest self. And your highest self doesn't look like someone else's highest self. This is your highest self, whatever manifestation that is. And I kind of feel like doing an art therapy project where you create a physical or an abstract representation of what you consider to be who you really are. Not who others think you what should be or things that you see in the media, but it's like, who are you? Um, and, and who we are changes all the time, but like in this moment, what feels like you and can you just fully accept that exactly as it is be in the sunlight and the clear sky of this card. There's nothing hidden here. And there's some little guy hit it right down there that's the shadow. The shadow is included in the picture so all of your fears about the fact that you can't mask that's right there that's okay you don't have to suppress it. Devil, change to expectations of others being what others want. Yeah, you know, the devil's a major arcana card, so it sounds like this is sort of casting a shadow over everything. It can't ever cast a shadow over everything because this is your true nature. But this idea of being imprisoned by expectations of others, expectations of oneself, and so I think identifying this as a core issue, that the issue is not your inability to mask or unmask. The issue is the expectations, um, being chained to what other people expect of you. So I think there's a little bit of a, this is what I was saying about knowing the situation is kind of better than asking a question. Because if you had asked, how do I unmask myself? That's a more limiting question than if you had just asked about masking in general and what we're discovering is the being changed to expectations or whatever you think you're changed to. Maybe you can answer that for us, what do you feel changed to that's preventing you from being the beautiful radiant self that you are and the beautiful radiant self that includes your insecurities. So that's my question for you is what else you change to insecurities expectations etc something to journal on there and then this is also like you know the scarcity mindset that's going on um and feeling like you're outside of belonging is what comes to mind here i'm going to put this down here the question was about unmasking um It was Karen, right? Was it Karen? Yes. You were talking about your autism and the unmasking and feeling like you can't unmask. You're always putting on a face. So can you say, could you clarify the question? What are you referring to? Oh, this one. What are you changed to that's preventing you from unmasking? And then this is for me being outside of belonging because you're outside the church feeling like an outsider you're not an outsider because guess what everybody masks and not to get philosophical and existential on you but i really do believe to some extent i hope this isn't too heavy we're all kind of in a prison <laughs> We're all kind of chained in society to certain conditioning to certain expectations of what people want from us. I mean, the level of restrictions we put on ourselves and that are put on us from the moment we are born is crazy. So for me, my whole spiritual journey is a process of unmasking. So not only are you not alone, you're talking about a core life issue that everybody goes through. And that's not to say that yours isn't perhaps more intense or more pronounced than other people's because of the autism or whatever else. But just know you're not alone. And let yourself go into the church and be with other people who feel this way in situations like this or by, you know, you are being yourself by being vulnerable and sharing this with us. That's being yourself. You're being yourself right now. So you know how to do it, you know? Um, so yeah. We could go more in depth if we had more time, but 
Thank you for sharing. I hope that was helpful. That was awesome. Yeah. And I think I, I wasn't totally satisfied. It would take me a little more thinking to think about a little bit more the connection between these sort of like maybe that's more the vibe where it's like these are the two things. These are the pillars that are preventing this from coming forward, perhaps. So maybe there's a this movement anyway. Yeah, I know a lot of people who find me have similar issues as me, <laughs> which I love. I love, love, love. <laughs> the, best, the best doctors are the ones who understand the medicine and the process, right? The treatment. It's great. It's great. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take, I'm, I mean, I'm being selfish right now, but I would, I would take a card or two if you, if you would like. Yeah, uh, let's do it. Do you have a question? Um, I guess just pursuit of crossroads. I don't know if anybody else is in a position of feeling at a, a crossroads, an intense crossroads in my life and wanting to make the right and good decision, the one that causes the least harm and supports the most growth. But I'm in this huge inflection moment. So I would love perspective on how to approach that junction, you know, for myself and for others. Mm. Are there two, two choices or is it sort of, we don't know where we're going? Well, it feels like to me in the moment that I'm in that I have not two choices, but a sort of how to approach it, if that makes sense. Like it's almost like the choice is being made it's, and I'm being sort of vague, but um, I would love guidance and insight on how to approach the choice rather than mm. to force the outcome, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. Okay, how to approach the choice. Like what, what can, what reminders or signposts do I need to be looking at in this process? In the interest of time, I'm just going to pull one so I can get to everybody. What's one, two, or three? What do you want? Three. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How does that land with you? Gosh, I see emptying as the first thing. Oh, cool. Or like pouring, like pouring myself into something. Oh, th that's interesting because those are kind of two different concepts to me. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. one resonate more than the other? Um, well, I'm, I'm like looking at the sim I'm looking at the card and looking at someone pouring water into a pond or a lake. <laughs> like, it's interesting that someone's feeding into the body of water. That's interesting. Yeah, right. It's sort of odd. Yeah. I liked what you said about emptying and filling. Mm. Or emptying and pouring into something. Mm -hmm. Which makes me think, for me, when I'm at a crossroads, I feel like there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of thinking. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the star is such a spiritual card. Um, it's about spiritual renewal. And again, what we talked about, which seems to be a theme in our group in this moment, which is vulnerability, you know, the figure is naked. Yeah. So I'm wondering, my question is, what are the activities that you can, what are the, because you said pouring into, what are the activities you can pour yourself into that will allow you to empty? Hmm. Like, is it possible, can we drain the brain <laughs> of the thinking so that we can sort of ground down into a more spiritual way of approaching the problem, which is maybe with less thought and more, um, more of a connection to your body yeah. about what's right. Yeah. That the body knows. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. 
I know, and the, the stars are interesting too. I think being so connected to the ground, but also being visible to the stars is an interesting thing. Oh my God. See, like you all know, you have so much better interpretations than I do. That was great. <laughs> uh, no, oh, Kylie, that's so good. Kylie said the ripples on the water mean the person can't see their own reflection. Oh, interesting. Maybe I'm busy pouring myself and not looking at myself in the reflection at the same time. Wow. Wow. Oh, Kylie, that's beautiful. Wow. So maybe in your interpretation, Kylie, you're seeing the pouring into you as part of the issue. Interesting. Where where am I pouring? Am, am I pouring my glass of water into the ocean or am I like filling something of mine up? And I'm mm -hmm. losing myself in the process. That's really cool. I love that. I don't know if you want to pour or if you want to see. Ooh, great question. <laughs> Maybe the pouring. Oh, here we go. This is, I'll be vulnerable because Karen and Linda, you've been so vulnerable. I sometimes work as a way to offset reflecting. So if I pour myself into something, I don't need to see my reflection because I'm busy. I, I'm doing this important work. I'm pouring, I'm working, I'm giving, I'm doing. Um, that's fabulous. Well, I think that's it. That's the interpretation for you. Yeah. Thank you. Hell yeah. Oh my God, guys, this was thank awesome. You thank you. Yeah, thank you for your vulnerability. That was a good one. Do we want to have people, oh, it's three minutes left, but I wanted to read for people. Can we put in the chat again who wants readings and can we just go like until 50? Yeah, let's do it. Like speed read? Kylie's up. Yeah, just remind me again who's up. Uh, yeah, Kylie, you are up. Kylie, what's your question or your situation? So, ooh, balancing my creativity. Louise would like to go after that. Which pile? One, two, three, Kylie. All right. Hmm. Immediately what comes to mind is balancing the difference between distinguishing the difference between fantasy that takes you out of the zone of, of um, creation and actually more into an inward zone of escapism and creativity that's generative. So I would say balancing the creativity is yeah maybe taking a step back and identifying all of the options that are available to you in terms of how you can express yourself and um, being strategic about the ones that make sense for you. I think that's similar to Charlie, we have like a, a, a need to take a step back and make decisive choices about what to be involved in because there are always so many choices in life. And as much as so much in our society, we like to, I know there was a book about like saying yes, I forgot who wrote that, Shonda Rhimes or something, about saying yes to everything. I think learning to say no is kind of, is the really anti-establishment thing. <laughs> It's like getting rid of the conditioning requires a lot of saying no. So that's my thought. I think boredom is really necessary for creativity personally. Saying no is super punk rock. I think so too, right? Kylie, does that land with you? Do you have any additional comments on that one? Resonate spot on, love it. Okay. Let's move on to Louise. I feel stuck in my life right now, financially, physically, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Me too, by the way. You're not alone. Mm. Sometimes I like to look at the bottom of the deck. Queen of Pentacles. Uh, accessing that part of you that knows how to care for yourself. Nurture yourself. Oh, another one fell out, which is about love, two of cups, but let's just stay on track here. One, two, three. Okay. 
As you can tell, I don't read reversals, but that is a thing you can learn. Nine of Pentacles. I usually like to ask how that lands with the person before I launch in. So feel free to type what lands with you here. Um, but I'll just say, you know, the Nine of Pentacles is about abundance. And you see this person chilling in their garden, which is a protected space. Yeah, she is happy. It's a totally protected space. It's safe. It's a place where um, plants and living things can be nurtured. And in order for things to really flourish and bloom, there needs to be this nurturing aspect. Um, and I think that goes along with what we saw at the bottom of the deck of the Queen of Pentacles, this nurturing. Um, and the fact that we have two pentacles involved in this reading suggests to me that when we talk about financially, physically, emotionally, you know, we got to care for our basic needs. Remember, we talked about, I talked about a possible interpretation of the suits to be Maslow's hierarchy of needs and we have physio physiological and safety and security down here at the bottom that's the suit of pentacles it's taking care of our basic needs so this prompts the questions how are you sleeping do you have a sleep schedule that is suitable for you um do you have a partner who's always snoring and are you you know like dealing with that and making sure that you can still get a good night's sleep are you eating three meals a day? Are you eating healthy? So I think that, in, you know, sometimes, um, so similar to what we're talking with Charlie, sometimes we get into these big concepts about what decision making means, what balancing my life means. And at the end of the day, we kind of just need to get in our bodies and like take care of our bodies first and foremost. And everything's going to look different once we're caring for our bodies and our minds, because if we care for our body, it, it cares for our mind too. Sleep is like absolutely essential to mental health. I have learned from personal experience. Thank you, Louise, for your vulnerability. I'm glad that resonates with the sleeping thing. You're so welcome. Does anybody else want a reading? We have three minutes left. If we don't have a reading, we can answer a question. This has been awesome to see in practice, too, because talking about the cards, you get a sense for what is possible and where we can go, but hearing it and allowing for that open, open spacious interpretation and intuitive sort of work uh, it's just cool and uh, i do want to remind everybody too that jen does readings uh, i just i'll put the link here again um because uh, if you'd like to continue this work and this practice it's a great way to learn and also grow and also get some intuitive guidance as well um kylie has a question as well uh, how do you suggest we further our tarot practice after this class Great question. Is Benjamina saying they want a reading? I think so. Thanks, Kylie. I've read for Kylie. Um, okay, um, let's do a quickie and then I'll answer Kylie's question. Is that okay? Yeah, great. I always go over. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> <the word? laughs> it's, it's your time. You can decide what to do with it. Yeah, I, I know, but I know you're also here, Charlie, so I don't want to like take up your time either. And I don't, everybody. I don't got anywhere to be. Okay, cool. So, oh, we needed a question from Benjamina, I think, mm -hmm. for a topic. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Future job opportunity. Great. Can you be a little more specific about like what you're going through in regards to that? Um, have you had the interview? How did that go? Um, do you want it? Just more about you, just because I don't read. I don't know if you were here for the other ones, but um, I don't read in a fortune telling way. So I can't tell you, you know, whether you're going to get it or not. I hope my cats aren't bothering you. What do you need to do about a future job opportunity? Okay, cool. This is like a very general one. So the response is probably not going to be um, how to approach it. Not a uh, not going to be as detailed, but we'll we'll do our best. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I know it's hard to be too specific when you're in a group sometimes. So you said how to approach this job opportunity. Okay. Sorry, I know that's really noisy. One, two, or three.
One, great. Hmm, Wheel of Fortune. This is a fun one. So Wheel of Fortune can represent good fortune, good things coming your way. Can also represent just the wheel of life and karma and the fact that we're just in an endless cycle where there's good and there's bad. And our job is to stay balanced um, amidst it all. And you have these, uh, these are the um, stable zodiac signs, I think. They're the, um, Kylie would know. Those are the symbols. They're symbols from the zodiac that represent um, stability, I believe. And you have the circle that represents stability as well. And I'm gonna actually look up what this is. Unless someone knows off the top of their head. You can't find my book right now. <sighs> I believe uh, Pat Sajak is involved. That's all I know about that card. That's. You believe what? Pat Sajak, I think, is involved in some way. And there's a wheel and there's Vanna White. Is that? Okay. Kylie gets it. Thank you. For that. Sorry, I didn't get it. Yeah, whatever. Right over oh, my head. Terrible joke. Terrible joke. <laughs> <laughs> terrible joke. Be here all week, folks. Um, those are some interesting <laughs> runes and symbols on there, too, by the way. Um, I've done the same thing for 26 years and need a change. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. So my my um, feeling is that um, life is change, and sometimes we're afraid of um, we're afraid of change, and so we try to keep the wheel stuck. We try to keep it stuck. But the thing is, your life is always changing, whether you know it or not, in small or big ways. Maybe what your life looks like right now is it's getting increasingly entrenched in this lack of external change or this resistance to change. So even if you've been doing the same thing you know, your happiness level now may be way down compared to where it was 26 years ago. So um, I think sometimes we need to make a change and we're afraid of it because we think that, you know, we're used to stability, but the thing is things are always changing. It's an illusion that nothing changes. Your life is changing already. So the question is, do you like the way it's changing or do you want to change it so that it can be better? So that's my thought, embrace change. And it sounds like, you know, you call it a job opportunity. So I would say, it sounds like there might be a slight positive trend to it or a sense of hopefulness about what it could mean for you. I would say, seize the word opportunity. Maybe that's your keyword. Um, open yourself up to opportunities so that we can maybe get out of this entrenched place where you feel like maybe you're just kind of going down, 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 down. Digging, digging yourself into this hole of a lack of, uh, or a resistance to change. Big change of lifestyle. Yeah. And I can't say whether it is what you need or not, but I think that allowing yourself to fully explore the possibility is an important part of your journey right now, whether or not you choose to do it. Even just the mental exercise or the physical exercise of like going through the steps of pursuing this and seeing if it's for you. Do the interview and interview them. Is this something you want to do? I think that's going to be really important for your spiritual personal growth, um, whether you decide to take the job or not. So that's my thought. Okay. Amazing. So hey. Kylie. Kylie, question. Asks. What uh, next? What next? Kylie you already knows so much. Kylie has been and we've been in each other's orbit for a while now and yeah kylie knows a lot about astrology and lots of things um and is in the discord group that we have so thank you for your contributions and i think maybe what i would say to you is different than what i would say to everyone depending on skill level i think it really depends um but i would say you know if you have a book keep you know allowing yourself to learn with the book and dig deeper into the meanings like I just learned, oh, I need to learn more about the Wheel of Fortune, what those symbols are. You know, there's always more stuff to dig into. And just follow your intuition with what's next. And don't be afraid to read for yourself and for other people. I think reading for other people is like a really scary thing. When we're reading tarot, we're like, oh, I'm not ready. Jump in and do it. Do it with someone else. Do it with a friend. And just start getting in the practice of using the cards um, rather than always studying. Like I would say, prioritize using the cards more than studying. Yeah. 
It's interesting yeah. too. Uh, people, I don't know if how it is for you, Jin, but sometimes our outside perspective of helping someone else, you know, there's a clarity that can come in from that, right? Which is like, we're not in sconce, we're like looking at it from the outside. If you sort of double up and twin, you know, you can then kind of get the benefit of that without having to like feel immersed in your own feelings too sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And I will say, um, oh, Karen, that's great. Um, remember the focus is on connection with, with the other person, you know, like think about how rich this session was. It was really rich for me. Um, and it wasn't because of the cards, it, the cards were prompts for us to like talk about our lives. So I think when you really keep the focus on connection, it, it makes it a lot less scary rather than worrying about like, oh my God, I don't know the meanings. Like no one cares. That's boring. Focus yeah. on the fun stuff. Yeah. The humanity, the like, ah. Uh the yeah. being alive you know <laughs> that part <laughs> uh well thanks everybody so much and thanks to everybody for coming to all three classes um that's been this has been really highly enjoyable and, and really really beneficial I'd, I'd say um and people seem to be having a great time as well um so uh yeah so please i've put the link to uh jen's link tree so that you can um you know, get a reading or join the, the tarot community um, and, you know, just stay in touch. I think, you know, follow Jin on socials too, so that you can get the benefit of Jin's, Jin's being and, uh, you know, stay in touch. Um, we do have a meet and greet after this, uh, but if there's anything, we're, we'll make sure that you guys have access to all these, all these videos will be up uh, on the past events on Momentus as well. So you can watch those and uh, study up. Yeah, Chin, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. All right. We will be moving on. Thank you all. Have a good Saturday. Uh, our meet and greeters, please stick around for more spiritual shenanigans.